Okay, we're going to call this uh, budget hearing to order. Let's start by uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and remove your hats. Um, no. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. The United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, be seated. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, tonight, Mrs. Feldman and I are going to review the 24-25 uh, school budget. This is officially our school budget hearing. You are welcome to ask questions. Uh, just raise your hand if, if you would. We will do our best to um, call on you and, and answer any questions you may have at this point. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Darren. Who's, who's advancing slides today? Oh, for you or is it? Oh, okay, great. So we're going to go over some school year highlights as we always do. Talk about uh, the, the budget for the budget uh, proposal for next school year. In the different budget propositions, and then we'll make sure you all know when the district vote is. Okay, moving on. So we're going to kind of go through these a little quickly um, in terms of some of the district in initiatives. Um, and you know, obviously, mental wellness is is a big a big issue across our society. And, and to address that issue here, we partnered with uh, hashtag Sane Here, which is an organization that promotes mental wellness, and it was one of our one of our many district initiatives. And you'll see some photos that, that support that. This was a mental health program sponsored by the Buffalo Sabres. This is a couple of, uh, there's a couple of pictures of the presentation. And this was a night that just happened uh, a week or so ago, uh, our mental health night, uh, pretty well pretty well attended for the, I think it's the third consecutive year we, we uh, held the mental health night. And we did Footloose this year and two Kenny Awards. We were nominated for two. Nominated for two Kenny Awards. Pretty remarkable set design and score. And um, the pit. And the pit. Is that score or the pit? The pit. They're, okay. they're, they're playing together. Okay. Right. That's pretty pretty amazing. So congratulations to all involved. It was a fantastic musical. Um, obviously, we, we continue some traditions here. Uh, drive your tractor to school day. Uh, you'll notice the National Honor Society Fall inductions, that photo was taken right outside the library. Wow. And there's our graduating seniors with it looks like their college sweatshirts on or their work of choice. And here's our top 10, uh, pretty remarkable uh, accomplishment to be in the top 10, pretty competitive grade point averages of 10 down to one. And there's their photos. Let me know, wave your hand if you recognize anyone in that picture, maybe from home, congratulations. <laughs> And there's some middle school events and field trips. Did you turn the heat on before we came in here? It's yeah. hot. Thank you. Is it warm? Yeah. 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 We're going to open the windows in a second. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're almost fully transitioned to computer computer based testing in our, in our middle level. Number one. I'm sorry, we are at our middle level at our elementary level. Um, Continue with our, our Say Something anonymous reporting system, which we adopted a few years ago. Move on. Just a few more highlights. Keep going. Willie Walker Jr. was uh, a couple weeks ago. Fantastic job. So many, so many students involved in that. It was wonderful to see. And of course, our, our, our garden club and our chorus. And we've done, done some interesting things in the Wood surrounding our, our campus and doing some sugar, maple sugaring, not only at the elementary level, but also at the high school level. All right, and uh, we did adopt a, well, I don't want to say adopt, but we did uh, adopt a new policy that allowed for a therapy dog at GLP. It's been a big hit. Uh, that Kaboom Bloom has been around for a while, and it's always fun to see the little ones helping each other learn how to read. Next one. Uh, part of our last capital project, you'll you'll see some of the some of the um, new additions in our sc our scoreboard. Those windscreens really really um, look fantastic as you're coming down Jennings Road. And of course, that new athletic entrance, which is part of our last capital project, which will be important to discuss in a few minutes when we get to the propositions. Continue to be very successful in in our athletic endeavors and 
whether we're running up or, or runners up or, or section champs or just being really tough competitors. Um, we have a couple of couple of students that went to states, and then we just had fall. We've had fall, winter, and spring signing days, which is a great uh, accomplishment for our students who are going on to pursue their athletic careers uh, along with their collegiate careers. Okay, moving on. The 24-25 budget. Go ahead, Ms. Feldman. Well, we're following the law and our revenues will equal our expenditures as what this slide is showing. $37,722,985 is the amount of money it's going to take to educate our students in the 24-25 school year. <clears throat> How are we spending the money? 74% of the money goes to the program, 11% goes to administrative, and 15% goes to capital. So our proposed expenditures, we've talked about these multiple times. General support is everything from buildings and grounds, administrative offices at the district level. So they're going from 4.3 to 4.4 million up 1.2%. Instructional is going from 19 million to 20 million. It's up 5.15%. Pupil transportation is going from 2.21 to 2.28 million, 3% increase. And then our miscellaneous, which is employee benefits that service civic activities, interfund transfers going from 10.5 to 10.7 million, up 1.91%. In total, our budget is going prep being proposed at $36,409,963, increased to $37,722,985, a 3.61% increase, which is pretty good considering what the inflation rates are right now. Where does the money come from? 43% comes from property taxes, 38% comes from New York State aid, 7% is miscellaneous, and in that 7% is money we receive from Erie County for sales tax. We have interfund transfers and appropriated fund balance of 8%, federal aid, which is Medicaid that covers the health care for our severely disabled students, 1%, and then reserves are 3%. Now, for those who like to look at the numbers, property taxes, big. Thing I want to point out here, the Board of Education is proposing a 2% tax increase. State aid was going down 1.39%. Federal aid is going up 33%. Miscellaneous is up 28%. Interfund transfer is going from 29,000 up to 329,000. That will help, that will be money from debt service fund that is saved there to help pay off existing debt. And our appropriate fund balance will stay static at 3.1 million. Reserves are going to go from 843,000 to 1.1 million, a $298,000 increase. And our total revenues are going to go up $1,313,022 or 3.61%. Any questions? Yeah. Is, is there a reason our state aid went down? So let me talk about that for a minute, because what we have to present at the budget hearing is, is the budget that the board adopted at that time. Okay? And, and at the time that the board uh, adopted the budget, we were under the impression that state aid was being reduced by just over $20,000. Okay? That, was, that was based on Governor Hochul's uh, um, budget runs, if you will. Um, the, uh, the houses, if you will, fought back against that and our state aid is essentially flat. Okay. So our state aid for next school year is exactly where it is this year. The difference in that 200,000 is the board authorized uh, Mrs. Feldman and I to utilize additional $200,000 from the reserves to cover that cover that um, shortfall. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? So we're gonna hear some Upgrades in the transportation department. We're going to replace one large bus and four 20 passenger buses. These will all be replaced with diesel buses. We have not moved into electric busing yet. Equipment upgrades will be replacing high back restroom cleaner, a 30 foot man lift, a power washer, 
fuel island upgrades, and GPS units for the new buses. Technology upgrades. Per the replacement plan, we're going to be upgrading items, and then security replacements and additions of cameras will be added. Proposition number one, in simple language. Can the district spend $37,722,985 to cover its expenses in the 24-25 school year? And this is the legal ease. Just so that you see, this is what you'll see on the ballot, but all it means is can we expend the 37 million? Proposition number two, can we purchase buses and maintenance equipment totaling $602,956 from the equipment reserve? There is no tax impact because this is coming from the savings account. Looks real nice here. And this is what happens when we put legalese to it. It becomes very long. And this is what you'll see on the ballot. Proposition three, purchase technology equipment totaling $242,599 from the technology reserve, no tax implication. And once again, it's not as long as some of the others, but this is the legalese. Proposition number four, I'm going to talk the simple language and then I'm gonna turn it over to Superintendent Sorticio for a moment to talk. Establish a new savings account for future capital projects, not to exceed a total of $15 million, no tax implication, and it gets funded over 10 years. Okay, so um, what this means is it's asking permission for the district to create a, a new capital reserve account. Okay, uh, we talked about or we showed some some uh, photographs of, of part of our last capital project. We're sitting in 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 part of our last capital project right here, and uh, a district can can with voter approval create a reserve to save money to offset costs in future projects. And districts that, that get this approval have 10 years to fund that reserve. Okay? They can fund the full amount or they can, they can fund the, a partial amount. So the request is, if we can, can we save $15 million over the next 10 years to fund future projects? We may be able to only save $2 million or $6 million or $8 million, or maybe, maybe we, can, we can save the full $15 million, but we just won't know because you can't predict the future. But what we can predict is that there are future capital costs in this district and the prices continue to skyrocket. Um, we have a lot of in infrastructure needs that we will, we will need to address in the next five to 10 years for sure. And it just makes good sense to save money while we can or when we can to offset those future costs. Any dollar we save is a dollar less that we'll need from taxpayers down the road for capital projects. And again, this is the legalese that will be there. So in summary, the district vote will be May 21st at the high school, middle school, auditorium for you from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And we hope they get a chance to come out and vote. Any questions? So in the flyer that you sent home about the budget and it, you, it, it showed, you know, the expenses for taxpayers with this budget and also the contingency budget, if that one didn't pass and it didn't seem like it was that much less. I mean, it would still cost us less. So what what would be cut if we had to go to contingency and this budget didn't pass? Any expenditures for equipment that are not necessary. So that would be any lines that are in there for um, building equipment to be replaced that is replaced with taxpayer dollars because it's smaller in dollar value and not bondable. And we would be restricted to keep within the cap, but essentially the majority of the money that would be reduced would come from the equipment. And there's other requirements as well. Um, for example, um, any entity that uses our facility would need, we would need to pay a fee. Um, so transportation, is that affected at all? Uh, in terms of that, the reserve. Well, I mean, a busing, a busing for kids, students. I know I just read in, in today's paper, the wind district said busing would be an issue for them if they didn't pass their budget. Yeah, they wouldn't be able to bus anyone within a mile, uh, I believe. I, I think I read the same thing. Yeah. And I, honestly, I need to look into that. I, when I read that, 
today yeah. or yesterday or whatever. I had that question here, and and that would be a that would be a question I have. Do you know the answer to that? In my knowledge, we're not allowed to reduce the transportation. I mean, it used to be, but back in the right, they changed the rules yeah. significantly. So it wouldn't be. I mean, to me, it doesn't make much sense not to pass the budget because then you would have to have another vote anyway, and there's that expense, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. So, and we're not, you wouldn't say that much. Correct. Correct. Anything. Hmm. Interesting. Any other questions? Students, anything? Did you take good notes back there? Yeah. What about up here? Did you take good notes? Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, that concludes our, our budget hearing. I appreciate all of you who were able to attend. Uh, students, if you need something signed, then, then stop up before you leave. And if you're 18 and you're a resident, then I hope you come out and vote on Tuesday. You can be older than 18 also. Thank you. You're looking right at me. At I get it. Ellen right. no, just makes it. <laughs>